My Little Pirates, Luffy's Adventures in Equestria, by Full Metal Pony. Yes, we are back to the main plot. Do not worry, we are back to the straw, and we're back to Luffy. We're back to the main storyline. You can all relax. We are back. A stop bubble wags and winging down Luffy's nose. Visits of meat that kept running away from him filled his dreams and made him toss and turn on the large bed he was sleeping on. Na 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 The door to his room creaked open, and a figure twined slowly over his bed. I can't believe I'm letting him sleep in the royal chambers. Celestia brooded. I said, send him away now and be done with it. Wait, what? Excuse me a sec. Wait, what? I thought you were fine with all this. You just said... Luffy, I am in your debt. You were willing to send him home and... Now you're just going... I need to send him away and now I'll be done with it. I... If you're going to have some bullshit, at least be consistent with it. The figure inks closer to Luffy. It raised his horn and he let his uh, hoof up. Ugh. The figure paused for a second, and then raised Luffy's hoof again. Its eyes white with curiosity, and its magic gave the hoof a tug. Rather than become tense, the hoof simply stretched out. out. Fascinating. An image of twilight flashed in front of Celestia as she rose from her throne. He had to make friends with her. She looked out the window as she brought the sun to dusk. Luffy's eyes flickered a little. The magic surrounding his hoof disappeared, and his hoof snapped back at him in the face. Ow! Eep! There was a flash, and the room was empty. Luffy rubbed the spot where he had been hit. What just happened? I know I heard someone scream. Weird. Wait, I thought that was Celestia. Wait, so that figure was someone else? I... Oh, for crying! The story's messed up on the POV! Look! If you want it to have made it clear that it was another figure other than Celestia, then you saw have left that last line of dialogue for Celestia out of the picture. Then, I wouldn't have been confused. But as it stands, then the whole entire segment made me wonder just who the heck was doing this. Sweet! Luffy hopped from Beth. You know... I thought you were a jerk, but anyone who gives me food can't be all that bad. Celestia walked out of the room while Luffy followed. Despite my contempt for pirates, I do owe you a debt for saving my sister. And I am a pony of my word. Oh yeah, how was your sister anyway? Does three just don't hurt? She's recovering, Celestia replied. Perhaps that is for the best. While she's recuperating, she won't see you. She hate pirates too? Luffy pouted. He glanced to his side and noticed that the royal guard flanking the door to the room he had been in. Celestia rubbed her head to her hoof. Maybe if you listen to why I have disdain for your ilk, you know why it's better that Luna never see you or another pirate again. How is every pony so nice, but their leader so mean? Livy murmured. Small trails of fire lay Celestia's mane. What was that? Yeah, why is you so mean? You know, Celestia, while... You're walking with Luffy, you could give Luffy the short recap. I mean, it's pretty easy. Luna captured by Luna captured by pirates somehow. I got mad. The end. Pretty easy. See so that pause was he realized how loud he had been, and a deep breath as the flames died down. As per my student's request, we shall have a small celebration for your defeat of Discord. Celestia let her horn up and opened the door to the grand ballroom. A table set in the metal with a vast array of food lying it. Know that this banquet has not been enjoyed by humans for centuries. Celestia explained, This will hopefully be the last time a human ever. She cut silver and noticed Luffy was already at the table stuffing himself. This is awesome! Luffy squeaked with a mouth of a fool. He didn't even say hello to the six mares already at the table. Randy's face turned slightly green. I think I found a new dieting method. His abilities must prevent him from choking. So I postulated while Luffy continued to inhale the food. That's always been my theory. Shoot, even after Saturday's a big Mac is a dis hungry. 
I will start to say with a gaping mouth. Oh, my. I've only seen flowers, rainbow dazzy, death at all dirty cows. Fingers with metabolism! He's got a point now! He eats it before burying her head in a bowl of mashed potatoes. She so emerged from her face completely covered in food. She quickly ate it all with one quick lick of her tongue. This is really good! You mind saving the sum for the rest of us? Raymond asked impatiently asked. She reached out to grab an apple, only for Luffy's head to spring out of the maelstrom he had made for himself and snatch the apple away. Hey! I was going to eat that! Dash said, jump into the mess that Luffy and Pinky were making. Celestia face off. If the paparazzi get wind of this, I am going to cause a drought. What am I doing? Normally I would be partying it up with these guys. Uh, sorry. Um, you know me. I, I would be busy celebrating with them. I would be laughing it up. You know, me, Celestia, the girl who caused the fracas at the Grand Galvin Gala because I knew how boring and stuffing it can be. I play little pranks to try to get ponies to lighten up around me so they won't always act like, Oh, great Princess Celestia all the dang time. I like being close to them. That's my character. That's my whole point. That's who I am. I should be right there in the middle of that maelstrom. Vic, hello? You're losing my character. He sat in a cell and looked down at his red hoof. His own words play in the back of his head. Whitebeard is my father. He smiled as he twirled himself around. <laughs> Pops are getting a laugh out of this. One of his sons is made into a horse. He had her clanking on the cells and clamped his mouth shut. Large horned beast entered the cell. However, its attention was on the other cell's prisoner. Last chance to get out. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Ace's fellow prisoner yelled. The beast sighed a little. Would someone resist? Give him a few hits! It raised his club and brought down on the pr prisoner's head. Dead trust out of the room. It gave a brief look back at the prisoner. Sorry, brother! For a few moments, the cell was silent, save for the sound of blood dripping onto the floor. Finally, the prisoner spoke up. <sighs> Can't even scratch it myself. You wouldn't be able to, even if you were free. Ace said. <laughs> At least I still have enough something rough on the end of my legs. Hmm. Doesn't matter. The prisoner sighed. He sent to his body to get a, a, a little closer to the wall. In a brief cut of light, his form was easier to make out. From afar, he looked like a rather bulky blue earth pony. However... Up close, he was unlike any type of regular pony. Rather than rough hooves, he had what looked like webbed stamps. His legs were covered in sapphire scales up to his knees. Sharp teeth extended out of his mouth. He's a sea pony! Particularly his bond canines. His unique trait was his tail, though. Rather than being made of hair, it was a thick dish tail that was also covered in scales. A large stylized sun made out of orange scales instead of blue ones adorned his flank. I'd rather suffer a thousand wounds than worse than this in order to stop this war. Jinbei. In a nearby cell, a pony with a wide line of stitchings running across his face grinned eagerly. Sounds like things are getting interesting. <laughs> Crocodile! No, 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 Vic. You just brought out my favorite One Piece villain of all time. Yes. Even after so many years, Crocodile still beats them all. Get me back to my Crocodile! Save for the broken pillars, the Grand Ballroom looked worse than it had at the gala. Celestia, Rarity, and Twilight all cringed a little at the spire food that was on the walls of the floor. Um, Rarity, I can understand. Twilight would be panicking, but Celestia? Okay, Fick, 
as I've already had Celestia point out not five freaking minutes ago, she would be in the middle of that mess with them, her face covered in gr different food particles, laughing it up, cheering, and maybe even getting involved with the Sire Contest. Did you just not watch a bird in a hoof and see her go, gotcha? Did you not see the episode of the Grand Galvin Gala where she did all that? Do you keep missing the parts of her character where she tells you that she practically tells people she doesn't want to be seen as some sort of higher god? This is not... Boa Hancock thick. Celestia is not the type of girl who goes, Rit. I'm staring down at you so hard that I'm looking up. She would be drinking as much cider as she could and laughing about it. Dude. What is with fix like this when they decide to make Celestia to Xenolestia? Hmm? It's like, every time they want to have Xenolestia show up, they always want her to act out character, not just by having her be all cruel and malicious, but also forget to have her say, I want to be seen like you. Ugh. Daz and Applejack were still in the midst of a sire drinking contest, and a quick few empty pints lined at their hooves. Fluttershy was off in the corner, nursing some sire of her own, and watching a fits play out. In the middle of all this were Luffy and Pinky, both rather hilariously distended stomachs. That was good! Luffy moaned. He then let out another loud bounce. Bop! It sure was! Pinky replied before laying out the bigger bells. Bop! What was your favorite? The cake? The sundae? The chocolate fountain? Piggy started a little in the midst of the last dessert. Oh, don't make me choose! Luffy playfully commanded. Still wish we had meat, though. Barbaric, Celestia commented. Celestia, let me ask. When the Griffin Ambassador comes by and asks for meat, uh, do you look at him and say his methods are barbaric? Because I am quite curious! Well, of course not, but this person would. Oh, hey, Billy Princess, where's the bathroom? Luffy asked as he wobbled to his host. Down the hall to the left. It'll be the 16th door. You wouldn't miss it. Celestia sighed. Luffy darted out of the room. Thanks! How can he move with that much food in his system? Twilight pondered. Why not? Some things are best left unknown. Fair... Rarity replied, so let me apply a sire and started chucking it. In between gulps, she said, I never wish to remember that this transpired in Cantalot. Yeah, well, I mean, other than a garden party. Other than a garden party, yes. Other than a grand alley gal, other than not. Other than our massive party at the we wedding? Other than not. Other than that, you know what? You know, you know what? Forget I said anything. Luffy quickly reached his destination and now stared at two doors. One had a silhouette of a stallion on it, the other had a silhouette of a mare. Mm. Luffy craned his neck forward and closely examined both pictures. Ah, this is too complicated! But that jerk princess is just messing with me. I'm gonna find a real bathroom. You know... I know Luffy's an idiot. I know he's a moron, but I think this is... There's no way I can finish this sentence without making a bad rubber pun. But I think this is extending my point of disbelief Belief to its breaking point. Well, congratulations. I didn't think you were going to be able to come away to say that without making it sound like you were making a bad rubber pun. Hey, 
You know me. I like to stretch the possibilities. He wandered up and down the halls of the castle, trying in vain to find a bathroom. Corridors twisted, and stairs gave way to more endless hallways. The doors were fruitless in revealing Luffy's goal. This is ridiculous! Luffy yelled as he slammed the door that only led to the janitorial closet. How big is this place? Why didn't Celestia send one of the main six? Pinky's left ear twisted a little. Huh? Pinky, is something wrong? First I ask. My ear wiggled, Pinky replied. You know some place getting really confused. I need to make sure your friend hasn't done something to the castle. Which, now that I think about it, I should have done it before. God, this fix is making me an, an idiot and a bigot. So let's see, try it out of the room and let the ponies alone. That's why I bit her lip. I never see her like this. Not even when I was tardy. Twilight. Celestia doesn't care if you're tardy. Um, Twilight. First I spoke up. This is much more than you just being late on an assignment. Imagine how you feel if something happened to your brother. I do. Twilight's very little. I hadn't thought about it that way, though. She looked over her friends. This is different, though, right? I mean, he helped defeat Discord. Hasn't done anything wrong since he got here. Celestia's whole entire flashback makes no sense whatsoever if you take a look at both our show's timeline and One Piece's. It basically lowers Luna's reasoning, kind of makes it so that Celestia seems more selfish, and Celestia has really no reason for acting all high and mighty. Celestia's acting horribly out of character, and I feel like I, we're all getting to the point where we're about to be flatterized. Oh, and he helped defeat Discord. And that's another thing! Defeating Discord with one hit? How? Why? Was it just to sell, show off Luffy? Just to make it seem like he was better than all of us? But did, did he just want to show off that, yeah, he was stronger and better and, oh, so cooler, when we all know that Discord would have won easily? That's it. I'm done. I'll be in my trailer. Stop Twilight! Yes. Okay, Starlight, you take over my lines of dialogue. So it's like my fail, my fail too. I mean, okay, like I said, we have seen him done nothing. Celestia's whole entire reasoning is faulty, and what's worse, she just said she owes him a bet. She was acting rather kindly, not last chapter. Well, last few chapters that weren't interrupted by the. Well, you know what? I have to. Stand Apple Jack. What high yield I? I agree. Flesh I whispered. Oh, don't worry, I'll stay and read. Um, Lyra, could you try to get those two back? He's loud, but he's funny too. Kind of like Rainbow Dash. What? Rainbow Dash is claimed as she took the year. Look, I may sound a little, but I'm not that crazy. She knows her friend's giving her a look. Okay, maybe a little, but I don't want to be a queen or anything. Huh? Fluttershy ch Rarity chuckled, her face visibly red now. Thrush, funny, Dashi, because you <coughs> want to be queen of the Wonder Boats. This cop is simply fabulous. Rarity did cla class to a rug. I never said I want to be queen of the Wonder Boats. I just said I want to be in the Wonder Boats. Some mares just aren't built for sire. Death sighed. She floated down a bit. It's just very on her back. Better get her to bed. It's getting late, said Starlight. Are you still making me tired? Fluttershy murmured. She's joining the rest of the group, making their way to the bedroom. Stunned Applejack was nearly out the door, when she noticed the group was missing some pony. She craned her head around and saw that Pinky was sitting in the middle of the room. Boy, guy, are y'all camel? I'll be here soon. Pinky replied. I just don't want Luffy to come back and nobody would be here. That'd be a super duper bummer. Applejack rubbed her eyes, then trotted back over to her friend. I'll slide up through, Lurus. I don't think you'll have to slide here alone, either. Well, I'm not thinking of playing Tic Tac Toe for myself, but now we can play together! Pinky happily exclaimed. I'll be playing the tail on the pony instead, Applejack said. 
no voice, but I've seen how he plays eight that too, and now I am the boy of illusion. What's wrong? Piggy said with a coy smile. I think you can beat. Applejack slammed the hoof down on the front of Piggy, glared at her. Leave his own! That's it! Livy stomped the hoof on the ground. I'm just going to use the butt! He tossed and took a deep breath. Is that? He tilted his muscles and started sniffing with it. Sighs nearly buzzed all over his head. It is! He started happily gabbling in the direction of the scent. Where is it? Where is it? He raced down through the corridors, oblivious to the fact that the decor was taking a turn for the gothic. Whereas most of the castle was well lit, this section enjoyed minimalist lighting. Heavy drapes were currently pulled back from the shadow windows, but they could easily block out the most light. Luffy heard hosts as it paused. He peered around the corner to see who was making the noise. He saw a royal guard emerge from the room and pushing an empty cart. His armor was darker than the other cigar cards as his coat. Wings were almost as sovereign and bat-like. Look, he looks cooler than the other guards. I would say, I hate to say I'm agreeing with this fake, but for once I'm agreeing with this fake. The bad ponies do look awesome. Luffy sniffed the air again. It's probably when you get to eat real food. Drill started to drift from his mouth. <laughs> I would be a pirate if I didn't steal a little. He looked up around the corner to make sure the coast was clear. Then he hissed his way along the wall, muttering, Food, 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 the entire time. He made his way to the door, ignorant of the moon symbols on it, thrust them open. MEAT! What in the Equestria? A dark blue alicorn yelled, as a chicken leg taught, lost its aura and fell to the ground. Luna looked down at the piece of meat and then glared at Luffy, a white eyes white with magic. How dare thou intrude on thy princess of the night! Thy punishment shall be severe for entering other nights into our private chambers! She roared, employing the full power of the Carolot voice. Luffy rubbed his ears with a huff and took a deep breath. You're really loud! By Sasha's beard. Her eyes lost their glow. Another user of the Royal Catalot Lloyds? She paused and got a better look at Luffy. Oh, the strange pony system, mister. Forgive me, I had no idea you were royalty as well. Let us powder her hair I am Luna, Princess of the Night. Uh, your proper name would be... Oh, no, 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 I am not howling this! Uh, Princess, problem? Yes! I am... Once again, we got another story where I am being nicer to my sister. I refuse to stay here and insult my sister any further! Stunt Luna! Stunt Luna? Who we could possibly have as stunt... Stunt... You all! Luna? You're her stunt, Luna? Yep. <sighs> well, until we can fix that, this, I guess I gotta do it with this. Luffy. Luffy corked his head. Did you say something about royalty? You employ the royal candy life points. Only tells with a disposition in the world and the ability to use it. I am yet unsurprised as well. I never known a stallion that. You gotta eat that! Luffy gestured to the chicken leg on the ground. What? Wuna nearly fell over. Nobody else ever dies on this food. Oh, Sister has kept even more things from me than I thought. Luna's eyes begin to spin. A royal dress oddly that stretches and eats me. This is too much to take in. And there was discord and stone and. Luna's eyes rapidly spun, and Desi clasped the ground and felt confusing. Ratira slid off and stopped near Luffy's hooves. Sheesh, every pony hid Charles here is weird. His eyes had turned back to the chicken lake. Well, since he's passed out, might as well finish this food before it gets cold. I'll only walk a few more minutes to stand on some pony munching on something. She opened her eyes and saw Luffy finishing off the rest of her chicken dinner. It's even worse than I am. Sir Wolfie, may I can ask you how you came to enjoy such food? Huh? Little bits of food fell out of Luffy's mouth as he spoke. I just like meat. I was literally going to have to spend my whole time here without it. Here? Luna's eyes glared with realization. Oh, you must be from one of the neighboring lions. No wonder you acquired such a diet. 
Yeah, that is neat. Livy replied, ignoring the asshole question. As he nibbled on a chicken bone. So, what's up with you eating this stuff? I thought ponies don't eat meat. They normally don't. Lily replied. However, since this piece is my remain of my imprisonment, my desire for flesh is a symbol of my... The moon was slightly higher in the sky when Luna took a breath. And that is why I'm going to free myself off it. Luna looked over to Luffy. Does that hand you hear quest? Luffy was snoring. So I was falling asleep. Luffy jumped up and looked around. Oh, oh right. Uh, what happened with your imprisonment? Luna's jaw nearly touched the floor. That was the beginning of my story. Oh, you are worse than the bear of laughter. Who? That's right. You are from out of Equestria. <sighs> Tata hoped to her faint. She's a rather energetic pinker pony who enjoys both screaming and sweets. I caution that you will avoid her while you are here. She could be a bit more of a nuisance. Are you a bit talking about Pinky? Oh, you've already encountered her. I'm sorry. Wound about her head in utter dismay. Why? Luffy raised an eyebrow a little. She's fun. I admit, once you understand her labyrinthine form of amusement, she is slightly entertaining. And that party was nice. Oh yeah, the other princess said you were recovering, so you weren't coming. But you look fine to me. Sista is a real overshadow as a total protection of me. Ever since my return, she's been very limiting on voices outside the castle. I was just lucky to visit. Um, Luffy was snoring again. Stop falling asleep. Huh? Oh, sorry. Must have told stuff. Aside from stretching, Nagala seems to be one of your talents. Luna sighed. Luffy tried to process what narcolepsy meant, rolled a word round in his mind. An awkward silence filled the room before Luffy tapped a hoof to the ground as he came upon cute knees. I don't see the like it stretch. Um, what a little crowd of twirled. Forgive me for eavesdropping, but... I was being freed of my stony prison. I overheard Twilight Sparkle and her comrades mentioning you. While Sister was preparing the celebration, I may have gone out to see if this story was true. Then why not say it was Luna? Let me get a hoof at Luna. So you were the one who smacked me in the face. I did not mean to. I was curious as all. I have not seen abilities so since that since I ventured in my days of old. Luffy grinned a little. You went on adventures? Quite a few. I wish to explore the seas beyond these lands and see the west of the world. She frowned a little. Perhaps I was naive then. Luna, Princess, they all remind you you're quitting too. <sighs> yeah, I better get back there soon, otherwise. The lo my loser self is going to keep going. And then he... Yeah, the audience is going to be ticked. I might lose viewers. But, Princess, please, I beg you. The thick of the fans, and I'm thinking of how much this thick is insulting my sister. Keeping me in prison for so long, not letting me out. Celestia would never do that. I can admit Celestia has been overprotective since on my release, but never to let me out only a few opportunities. Where did any pony get that idea? I mean, surely it can't be my own position and my own problems and my own fears that kept me say, no, it must be my sister that's responsible. I just, this thing is insulting to my sister, and I refuse to go further. 
And since you're an old powerful boom goddess, there's no way you would take a monetary bribe. No, I would not. And furthermore, there, you can raise my salary all you want, but there's no way I'm going back. You cannot... I'll give you a complete selection, a collection of Slayer's Revolution. Slayer's Revolution. I have got, just gotten it. More screen time on Fall of Starfleet and it's a deal. You got plenty of screen time! Not nearly as much as my sister. And I want more interactions with my team. Fine! Thank you. Bye-bye! Sounds fun, Luffy smiled. Why are you getting sad about sailing? People don't understand, Luna replied. No pony would. Since the house made the sea so distant and terrifying. Which still wouldn't stop some ponies from going out. I mean, Daring Do would go out of her way to sail, and so would many, many other ponies. As a matter of fact, there are several ponies if you told them the seas were dangerous, they would just be acting like you, so it makes no sense. Well, there are sometimes. Like this one time my ship almost got eaten by Sea Kings. It was pretty crazy. Luffy rubbed a hoof against his chin. I wonder if Sea Kings taste good. What was I somehow went wired than they had gone the whole night? How how do you know about Sea Kings? Oh, I'm a pirate! You! Celestia burst into her room with a main flame. How dare you enter my sister's room! Which, if I really wanted to avoid, why didn't I follow you to the bathroom? Sister! Luna cried out. What in the Equestria are you doing? You'll burn down the castle like that. No, what are you doing? This is kind of extreme for you. <sighs> this is only extreme because the figure's making me to! I will not have him corrupting you. <sighs> Sit down, Strike. <laughs> Celestia, I... <sighs> Sean Connery's autograph? A not work. Celestia yelled back. She left her horn at Gor uh, Aurora, surrounded Luffy, and slightly singed parts of his coat. Ow! Watch it! Luffy glared over Celestia. Be glad I do not burn you to cinders here, Celestia retorted. Sister! I don't know what's come over you. But this is no way to treat another member of the family. He, Celestia hissed, rubbing her temples at the dialogue. It's the farthest thing you can, from what I can imagine. Then he's not even a pony. Celestia slapped a hook to her mouth as soon as he realized her sentence. Wait, did this fact just make you stupid, Luna? I didn't believe it did, sister. How I mean, do you think I would have figured that out five minutes ago? I am so sorry. Well, better to be an idiot than to be than to be some pony like you, than to be well, than to have the, your treatment. <sighs> yes. The only difference between me and Zeno, unless you're right about nails, is that I haven't forcefully turned any pony into a pony. Sister, realized he's a dawn slowly on Luna's face. I know he's a pirate. I can see that. I can... You, you know, he was just talking about sea kings and all that. How? I did, could I not miss that? Will you do something to the script? Hi. We said we would continue acting. We didn't say we would stick to the script. Yes. So we're gonna put. So we're going to start messing around with a bit. Celestia so turned around. Luffy pounded against Celestia's belt to no avail. No matter, Luffy. Now you shall face the wrath of Cele of Princess Celestia for daring to barge into Princess's bedchambers unannounced. A tickle torture. No. <laughs> Luna continued to tickle Celestia. Celestia continued to tickle Luffy th through the spell. 
guys, we gotta stick to the script. Come on. We're almost done with this chapter. Then we can move on to the next. Oh, come on! No! No! I'm sorry, sister. I didn't want you to know. She took a breath and summoned a piece of paper over Luna. Luna looked at it and saw Luffy's bounty. Why didn't I see this? He's a notorious pirate that has caused chaos all over the world. He's only here because of the debt I owe him for saving you. Luna practically spat out that last sentence. Uh, Celestia, you really are trusting the nobles, uh, the world government, about what they're saying about Luffy. You, you really trust them about this. You're really trusting them. Uh, you know, a smart Celestia would investigate this claim by actually going to Crocodile since apparently it paddled down. It's right next door! Which is actually kind of stupider now that I think about it. You could just go down and ask Crocodile the truth. Uh, why are you trusting him? Not to mention, he just made war with the world government. The world government starts forcing you to do this! He saved me? Luna's ass. I did her forehead became slick with sweat and her breathing became strained. Pilots, humans, blonde. Celestia's eyes filled with terror as he summoned a golden aura around Luna's head. The princess of the night collapsed instantly. Why am I losing my oxygen? No. Forgive me, sister. Celestia muttered before glaring up at Luffy. Scum! Even though this is partially my fault. But still, scum! It was a bright flash of light. They were back in the room Luffy had woken up in. Celestia flung over the bed with an unceremonious thud. Princess, what are you doing to me? Something I should have done long, long ago. What are you? Why are you removing your parting? Your tiara? I'm going to make sure you submit to me. <laughs> no! Uh, Sansi, this is my little fetish. Celestia's, uh, Luffy's Adventures, and Smut Questia. Why did you give me this? Simple. I figured if we turned Celestia, if we brought in Molestia instead of regular Celestia, it would make this fic a little bit better. No, it won't! None of my viewers want to see me read porn! Do you guys? Come on, admit it. You'd rather be reading porn than reading this insult to Celestia, wouldn't you? Out of my way, Santi. There's a bright flash. And they were back in the room Luffy had woken up in. Oh, I read that part already, but you wouldn't know! You're forbidden from leaving this room. I'll be watching. Celestia tried out the door and slammed it shut. What's with her? Luffy plowed He flopped around on the bed until he was comfortable. I want to hear her sister's stories, he sighed before drifting off to sleep. You know, in between chapters, I just realized this story is actually pretty accurate to what piece in My Little Pony. If you take out the fact that if I was wanting One Piece, I'd be happy by now and probably in a few tears. And you take out the fact that if I was wanting MLP, I'd be happy by now and characterize it made sense and I might be in a few tears. But other than that, this is completely accurate to One Piece. Oh, and according to one of the comments, it said that it has the tradition that everybody hates Luffy before he's about to leave. Exactly! Just like in Kokuyashi Village! Okay. I'm sorry about that. Just like... Okay, let's ignore East Blue for a sec. Just like Drum Island, where everybody hated Luffy until he was about to leave. Except for the fact that... Luffy surrendered right off the bat, and everybody agreed to help him. Or in Alabasta, where everybody was happy to see Luffy. Or in Water 7, where the only people who hated Luffy was Frankie, and they didn't really start to hate Luffy until he was framed for the murder of Icebeer, Iceberg. And even that wasn't very long, because as soon as Icebeer... Iceberg got back and realized what was up. He helped clear Luffy's name. Oh, but, but, Fistman Island? So totally accurate. Luffy awoke to the sun. Chapter 12, I think. Moonrise. 
Olivia looked at her son glinting a little too directly into his eyes. He got up and rubbed the spots he was seeing away with a huff. Ah, oh, that was a fun party. His son gave a low gruff rumble. Better go get breakfast. He walked toward the door, but his hoof was blocked from posting on it by a purple glowing shield. What's this? He tapped on the shield a few times. Ugh, is this another thing like that purple one used? Oh well, I'm hungry. He stretched back one of his hooves, and then was started flying at the wall. Come on, come on, no! Boom! Livy didn't get to finish as his hoof met the wall. Then he was sent flying back. He coughed a little before getting back on his hooves. Ow! That actually hurt! He slowly advanced over to the shield again and tapped it. I don't get it. I broke the last seal easily. Maybe if I hit it again. I wouldn't re recommend that. A voice behind Luffy. He turned to face Celestia, who had a stoic look on her face. I've ordered my finest guard to erect a shield around this room. You are not getting out without my permission. But being stuck in this room is boring! Luffy complained. Outside, Shining Armor is sleeping, thinking... I wish I was back with my sexy wife. Complained as he wallowed on the ground in fake misery. Can I at least get breakfast? I'm starving! You ate enough food to supply an entire regiment of soldiers. So as he retorted, by so great you with a meal. Her sword glowed and cover plate popped in the room. Enjoy your breakfast. She was then gone in a flash. Well, at least he's not a total jerk. Luffy removed the lid, grimaced and screamed. In front of him was a rather large plate of salad. She's very evil! Do you guys get the joke yet? Luffy likes meat. Lots of it. He really enjoys meat. Meat, 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 meat. That's the only thing to Luffy's character. That's the joke. Hello, wool. Applejack opened at the, an, an and I coronation at the sound of pure despair. Does he knows that Pinky's head was resting on top of hers, and that Pinky was drooling on her hat? Twilight, was he here, Lyatt? What? That was a sound of pure de despair and desperation. My heart made that the day my my mom and paw died and said it. The straw hat makes that noise now. Do you think we should go back to the thick? Oh, you okay, kid? I'm too busy enjoying my time at time practicing my lines of dialogue for Final Starfleet. Oh, sure. You practice. Oh, you only get one set of lines. Have you forgotten? I have a dual role in that thick. Uh. Pie guy, guy it off! Huh? Piggy's eyes flaring open. Oh! Good morning, Crabblejack! Piggy, as he glanced down and saw that they were atop of a 3x3 three three grid. <laughs> he must have fallen asleep after the 50 second round! Applejack got up, stretched, her choice giving a few gauntlet well, creaks. Well, what kind of sleep? Miles well gave Black Voice! Oh, hope Livy's okay. He never came back. Well, the talk died of Discord. No, he didn't. Oh, I'm sorry, he is found. Applejack still grumbled a little. Hold on, maybe they have a good fruit. Salad. Livy cried out of misery. A comical stream of tears ran down his face. He bent down ate all the greens in one gulp. This is still gruel. She could have at least given me bread or something. He flopped down on his back and instantly fell asleep again. You know, this person of Celestia would probably be really, really shocked about all the things that happened in Fallout. Oh, Fallout Equestria. Now, there's a figure I'd rather be reading. Hey, guys, remember all that time we spent reading Fallout Equestria Broken Steel? And I was happy. You was happy. How about we go, go back to those days, Sally? Please? Pretty please? Long some time later, runs his stomach. Darn it! I need food! He looked at the simmering shield that practically stuck to the room's walls. Maybe the point making the shield could go get me something. Luffy got up and went over to the door. Hey, shield pony! Can I get some real food? That princess was a jerk and only gave me a salad. First off, came a self voice from beyond the doors. It's not shield pony, it's striking armor. Second, the princess has ordered me to keep my post until preparations were done for your departure. Third, the princess is not a jerk. Shiny? Came in our voice. What in the are you doing? Starlight! Why are you here? You usually send me a message when you're in town. 
Now, now she does it. You're right. <laughs> the princess didn't tell you I was here? Oh, this is worse than I thought. Starlight murmured. But there's more important things right now. Like, why are you casting a shield spell in Luffy's room? You know this criminal? Sorry, Armor uttered in surprise. He's not a criminal. Okay, technically he is, but he hasn't done anything wrong here. And besides that, most of that was just bad information anyway, Twilight explained. Sorry, Twilight. Orders are orders, Armor droned. Well, it's a good thing I asked the princess to take him around the city then. Starlight replied. So, Luffy heard the sound of paper unfurling, and Sunny Armor spoke up again. Very well. Suddenly, the shield around the door faded, and it opened to reveal Twilight. Uh, uh, reveal Starlight. Um, Maureen? She said with an awkward grin. Maureen! Luffy smiled. Thanks for getting that shield thing down. I couldn't break it like last time. Twilight's brother is a master barrier caster. His defensive spells make mine look like foes play. Starlight explained. Luckily, I convinced the princess it would be more dangerous to keep you up. She then turned around and walked out the door again. Come on, we've all got some questions for you. Okay, I'll answer whatever you want, Luffy replied as he walked. Just give me bread, cheese, or anything but a salad. Um, okay. Starlight looked around to her left, a white stallion in a guard uniform. Thank you, Shining. I'm not one to disagree with the princess. Armor tried over and gave Starlight a nuzzle. Just be safe, okay? Cross my heart and hope to stick it fly, stick a cookie in my- Ow! Starlight yelled as he poked herself in the eye with a huff. Armor turned away from Starlight and watched past Luffy as he got to Luffy and whispered, Hurt her and you'll regret it. Luffy creased his brow a little at Armor. Hey, why would I? Luffy, Starlight called a bit ahead of them. Are you coming? Yeah. Luffy tried away from Armor, knowing that Stallion kept glaring at him until he and Twilight rounded a corner. What's his problem? Shiny is just worrying about me. Starlight looked at the ground. We had some merit to this since a while back. Still seems like a jerk to me. Luffy pouted. The only one that doesn't seem like a jerk is that princess. Well, other than you guys. Bye, I got a short memory in this Vic. Celestia? Starlight replied with confusion in her voice. No, the other one. She had meat. Princess Luna? Oh no, I can't encourage him to meet with her. Not after all she went through. Thanks, Starlight. What can distract him? So, what's this grand line like? She blurted out. It's awesome! Luffy grinned. I'll thank the stars. Twilight brings a sigh of relief. There's so much cool stuff there! The Luffy replied. Like sea trains, sky islands, long islands, gold round rainbows. <laughs> Does someone say rainbows? Death flew down from one of the adjacent corridors and joined the group. Yeah! Luffy replied. It's super cool! We saw it after Candy fell on us. Piggy popped out of nowhere and yelled, Candy? He didn't tell me that part. I got tired of explaining everything. Luffy sighed. Sides, Saucy makes better stuff anyway. Oh, that's right. You have a super awesome karate chef. Piggy squealed agree. Your crew is so cool. Oh, yeah. Death flew in in front of Luffy's face. Is it true that one of your, your friends copies Pegasi? No. None of my friends fly. Luffy replied. Death's face of, I met mess with the weather. Oh, yeah. No, he does that. There was this even one time Usopp and made me and Chopper sneak into the bathroom. And she shocked us for some reason. Yeah, it really hurt. <laughs> Sounds like derpy. Daz chuckled. Luffy fell a wing Pokemon to the side. He turned his soft flare side, standing close by him, shaking a little. Excuse me, Mr. Pirate. I mean, Luffy. If it wasn't too much trouble, could I? <laughs> Luffy tilted his head as he looked at her. Huh? I wanted to ask about your. <laughs> So far as I hit behind her, may have backed away a little. Uh, Thick, you know Fluttershy opens up more the more you know her, right? It, 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 you know it's... Uh, you know once Fluttershy gets to know a pony, she opens up just a little bit more? It, it, I mean, if she was this bad, she would still be really, really, really sorry around Rainbow Daz and Twilight. Anyway, Luffy looked back at the desk. It's funny to see a Pegasus, because I... I wanted to ask about your reindeer. Flash I brought it out. Chopper? Luffy tapped to his chin. Um, he's a reindeer. 
Oh, that's so fascinating, Fireside cooed. It's too warm for them in Ponyville, but I've always wanted to see one. Are his horns really velvety? Yeah, except when he beats people up, Luffy grinned. Then they sometimes get really sharp. At least that's what Usopp says. Yeah, from what Pinky, Applejack, and Rarity said, this chopper sound like other reindeer. Starly's fuck it up. He's a reindeer humane, right? Uh-huh, Luffy answered. He ate a devil fruit that made him part human, I think. Sometimes I wonder if half of my crew was ever human to begin with. <laughs> Fascinating. And these fruits grant you your abilities as well? Starlight asked. Guys, I think this fic is looking up. I mean, there's a genuine character interaction. I mean, have you ever noticed this fic gets better when the more Celestia spends time away from the story? Let me stretch out for and scratch his flank. I ate mine when I was little. Kinda sucks I can't swim, though. Oh, and it tasted awful. I see, Twilight rep Starlight replied. Where do these fruits have any relation to poison junk? Well, she was wondering to herself. Luffy walked in the direction of the other group. Luffy bounced over to the next to Luffy. Hey, Luffy, where are you going? I'm going to find a princess, Luffy replied. Uh, I thought you thought that Princess Celestia was a meanie. Piggy's eyes nervously dart left and right. She is, but not our Celestia. Not her, the infantry one. Lupa! Luffy replied, she had chicken. Silly, you mean Luna! Pinky corrected. Oh. Fireside grinned a little. I didn't know Princess Luna owned a chicken. I'm glad to ask her about it. Actually, she owns a little possum. Her name is Dar her His name is Tiberius. <laughs> Let me pause a second for a sprout. I thought police can't eat, your, say, eat meat. But you say you want to eat chicken? Oh, maybe she has other stuff. Luffy drilled a little. Why does I stood still for a second as Luffy's words ran through her brain? Her pupils tried to tiny dots. No, no. What? No, th this is too much for me. Bye. Uh, Let her I, I Look, I've got a whole bunch of things ready for me. I mean, I've got, I got stuff to do in... Hearts and streams. I got stuff to do in flooding shooting stars. And furthermore, I've got a whole entire adventure dedicated to myself in Fall Star Fleet. In case you see, I'm a little bit busy. So, if you want me to continue acting like this flanderized version of myself, you can just find another bear. Hm. Stud Fluttershy. Oh. Oh. Tamaki from Bamboo Blade? Yes. I decided to, I decided to sign up for the role of Fluttershy. I hope you don't mind. <sighs> Could have I gotten Rio instead? Really, the baseball girl, you want her? Look. It was Zaya that or Himura. Do we really want the demon guy? No one wants the demon. So, if you excuse me. My pu her pupils contra contracted to tiny dots. Her whole body shook. And finally, her legs gave way and she crashed to the floor. Finish I! All five of her friends yelled. Luffy? Starlight looked away from her friends. And over at Luffy, who was currently scratching his head in confusion. Please don't mention your eating habits in front of Tamaki. Oh, sorry, Luffy nonchalantly replied. Dad's trotted over and chucked Fluttershy onto her back. Tomaki onto her back. <laughs> I don't see your dispatch this nightmare night. <laughs> she nuttered. Anyway, why would Princess want to be eating a chicken? Piggy pondered for her eyes wide. Oh my gosh. Does she want to gobble some? Piggy, please, I beg you, don't! Don't worry, I can see that this thing is messing with your head badly. I might leave you. Oh, thanks, Pinky. Pinky! Twilight yelled at her friend. Oh, right. Pinky blessed a little. Sorry. Ugh, Starlight grunted. What's the sickest of food? She opened a pair of doors that led to the dining area. No more talking about meat. Luffy laid on his side past his stomach. Ugh, that was good. Sleep better than a stupid salad. Starlight pulled out a quill as a part of it. I was taking down notes while keeping a close eye on Luffy. Subject appears to have expandable organs as well. 
Yeah, yeah, food was good. Can we get exploring now? Castle's ice and all. But I keep thinking I'm going to run into something. Her lips are wasted a little. Like the gala. Oh, let's go find those giant candy canes they have during heart swarming. Ying. Twitch. Twitch, twitch. Vicky, twitch. I'm fine. I'm fine. I can handle this. This victim thinks I'm an idiot, but I'm fine. Um, Pinky, I think they, uh, only have that during heart swarming. Tomaki mumbled. Oh, guess you got me there, Pinky replied. She brought her hoof to her head, swarming her around a little. Bet your side friend stuff at you. Oh, maybe this is a good joke stop. Well, I do know this, uh, interesting, uh, Indian restaurant uh, down the street that's a little off the corner. It's got a really nice girl named Saffron. Well, why don't we get going then? Starlight asked. She then turned and looked at Luffy and his stomach. We're about to roll him. Yeah, I'm good. Luffy took a breath and his stomach deflated. Good food, dude. P Twilight's eye, Starlight's eye twisted a little. He's a grayer and I'll eat a pinky. So, where are we going? Luffy asked. Starlight turned and began walking towards the door. I suggested to the princess that it would be best to take you around the sea for a day. Sounds fun, Luffy replied. Twilight. Tomaki spoke up. What about Applejack and Rarity? Twilight's fa Starlight's face turned a little red. Rarity's a little under the weather. Oh dear, maybe I should... Oof! Tomaki whimpered as he slightly bumped into a white pony with a blonde mane. Who the Tartana is are you? The pony demanded while going at Flare's side. And Tomaki... Aye, aye. Tomaki stared. Out with it! The pony placed the hoof on his head. Yeah, the thing. Old Celestia will help us with such webs into the castle. Tomaki backed away and whimpered a little. Pinky tried over put a hoof on her back. It's okay. Pinky whispered. Death stood down in front of the pony and gave him a stern look. Hey, don't mess with Flareshy! But, but aren't you kind of random? Yes, I am. But, you see, here's the thing. In these type of fun fix... Almost every pony that has ever showed up in the show has to have an interaction with the character at least once. I'm surprised Flim and Flop don't show up at any given moment, or did see. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty positive there's a long line of ponies outside waiting for the cameo. Oh, there is not. Let, let me go check. I, I'm positive there isn't a long line of ponies waiting outside the studio for their respective cameos. I swear, these guys don't think that these fit things are that much of a cliche storm. I mean, come on, I... Oh my god. There's a long line of ponies and One Piece characters all waiting for their cameo. Well, I'll be darned. It's okay, Vic. We all understand where you're coming from with this. But, um, well, uh, just... Don't expect me to be happy. <laughs> I really am. What's your time, Commoner? I'm Prince Cameo. You mean Blue Blood? I might as well be Cameo for all the presents I have or reason I have in this story. So, from now on, just call me Cameo. And all I can have you in prison for contempt against the crown. Cameo retorted. You think I give up? Death was unsatisfied by a purple aura clamping her mouth shut. My apologies, Prince Cameo. Starlight said with a brow. She then used her magic to pull Death back. It won't happen again. Be sure it doesn't. Cameo huffed. Who's this idiot? Livy asked. Everybody's his jaw dropped. Yes, how dare Luffy called Blue Blood an idiot, even though Rarity did so much more back at the gala. Cameo somehow turned even wire, fell back a few steps. Then the veins on his head started pulsating, and he reared back. You! How dare you! I'll have you thrown in the dungeon of forever! You're annoying, Luffy bluntly stated. Cameo fell into shock again, before the veins on his head throbbed even more. How does it? I shall deal with you myself. His heart blazed, and he started charging at Luffy. See, 
you, I can't even get my character straight. I mean, why would I ever attack a pony when clearly if it was the real me, I would have summoned guards instead and said, I summoned bodyguards and told them to attack instead. But here I am getting my horse dirty. Come on. Even 120 days of blue blood was more accurate than this. Now he or Cameo noticed tw Starlight's horn, Blue Blood's hoof, glowing purple for a second. Ho ho, you! Before he could finish, Cameo tripped and flew past Luffy into a pillar. Ugh! I think it's time to leave, Starlight quickly said. Ah! Luffy frowned. I wanted to fight him. Luffy, Cameo is a high ranking noble. Starlight explained. If you hurt him, you really would be a criminal in the quest you. So? Luffy not so long replied. He was being an idiot to your friend. Starlight looked down at the ground. It's hard to explain. Fluttershy is my friend, but messing with Blue Blood would hurt all of us. Like what Rarity did? Like what Rarity did. Don't ask questions. I think this fic forgot the last episode. The season finale. Well, the season finale went through. I think he only paid attention to the season, to season two finale, season one finale, finale, and that was it. Scoofy's got a little. He says like those jerks are Shibori. First off, it's Shibori. And two, yeah, Blue Blood's so much like those jerks who would shoot in a fishing boat or, you know, enslave people and, or just, you know, general be a holes. Yeah, they so mess with those. What? Piggy exclaimed. Blue Blood may be, Cameo may be a meanie, but he never hurt any pony like that. That reminds me. Are those purple actually dragons? No, they're just jerks. They assert geek punts. Be cool to see a real dragon, though, Livy wondered aloud. Yes, yes, that's all good, Starlight nervously said. So he glanced down at Cameo, still in conscious form. Why don't you tell it to us while we're exploring the city? So he then turned around and headed for the castle gates. Okay, Livy smiled. He glanced back at Tamaki. Oi, you better? Oh, yes, Tamaki muttered. I'm much better. She went to small tear from her eye. Thanks. You know, Fick, while we're hitting all the cliches, why not have one of the main six fall in love with, with Luffy? I mean, it wouldn't be any more cliche than all the rest of the bullshit you've been pulling out, but, I mean, why not just throw that in, too? Luffy flew over and whispered in Luffy's ear. Don't worry, I give him a good smack, too. I like you, Blue Pegasus. Luffy grinned. Oh, for crying out loud. Is it really that hard to rem remember my name? Rainbow Dash! It's my name for Pete's sake! Starlight silently like holds herself. Just show him around and spend his energy. I know that's possible. Even Pinky gets tired eventually. As the group set out to explore Canterlot, they failed to notice a pair of gleaming eyes that watched in front of the shadows. I'm never eating peanut brittle again! Starlight complained. Her mane was currently affixed to her head and neck, with bits of sugar and peanuts attached to it. The rest of the group wasn't very much better, as they made their way back to the castle. Well, I thought it was yummy! Pinky exclaimed. Black spots of ink dyed her coat and mane. She looked like a beer a real mix between a pony and a Dalmatian. Although, the candy store owners seemed a little mad at us. The tailor, the librarian, the deli owner, and... Tomaki muttered to herself. A bit of cancer dripped from her mane as he spoke. No point seemed to hear as they crossed over to the boat into the castle. I think it was fun outrunning them. Uh, shame you guys couldn't have seen it. Yeah. Why would I want to see Luffy here right with the main six and have fun and have adventures? Why would I ever want to see Luffy have actual character interactions? Why would I want to see them develop friendships? Why would I want to see that? Oh, no, 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 no. I want to see Celestia being a xenophobic creature. That's what I pay money to see. That is what I've been paying my internet service for. I paid them to show me Xenolestia. I... <laughs> Want a character interactions? Pshaw, I don't want that. <laughs> Nobody wants to see character interactions on a crossover. <laughs> That's so <the> silly. <laughs> I mean, 
Have you seen 32 Senshi? Ha <laughs> ha! It had the Senshi all the way around to be friends with the Jedi Knights. I didn't want that! I just wanted to watch them fight Palpatine. Ha 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 ha! you! She was covered in ink, sugar condiments, and feathers that didn't mess her own. Yeah, that was pretty neat, Luffy said. Somehow his only ailment was a few pieces of his coat being caramelized. Just wondering, that one still order was a donkey, right? The wink on it? Pinky asked. Yep. He's actually a good friend of another donkey I know back in Punkville. So, do all animals talk here? Only if you have hoofs. Oh, no. Tomaki explained. There are many little creatures in that no pony can understand. Sometimes I wish I could, though. Even though my specialty is talking with animals. Hmm. Wonder if I could ask a cow if it take. Starlight saw Silas Luffy before he could traumatize Fluttershy again. Well, actually, you could ask a cow that question. And she'd probably be scared. Why don't we all go back to our rooms and clean up after dinner? Starlight eyes with a nervous smile. Luffy waved a hoof and noted that his coat made peeling noises he did. Well, being sticky is kind of gross. Hey, stun Applejack, don't you have a farm to be getting to? Well, golly! Normal Applejack would be talking about it by now, saying he and she have to get back to the farm. But I'm stun Applejack. I'm a moron. Right. Excellent, replied Twilight. We'll go also go check on our friends. Got it! Luffy left the group, finished back to his room. Shiny Armor was standing outside. Ah, you're back. No problems. Nope! Good. Now please make your way to your room. You know, I'm gonna leave as soon as I'm clean for dinner, right? Orders are orders. Luffy just sighed and entered the room. The shield went up behind him. However, before he went to the bathroom, he noticed a large fire on his bed. He found an exam it. In front upon nosing, it was just like the serving of salad he had this morning. Just bigger. Bet that princess is just being a jerk again. They need so something good this time. He reached his head out and looked at the dome on the player. He instantly sleep, dropped the dome when he saw what was inside. Large cooked turkey. His mouth watered instantly. He tore off the leg and started eating it. Tears of joy streaming down his face. Get the joke. Luffy wants food. Th that's the joke. He quickly devoured a bird and fell asleep afterwards. Starlight came to get him for dinner, but upon seeing him asleep, left him alone. Neither C nor Luffy knows the eyes from earlier were also watching now. The owner grinned a little. Luffy was sweating. He pushed off the blankets he was sleeping off, but continued to feel hot. Ugh. Where's a fan? He mumbled. His eyes half open and see his room aflame. Oh, food's on fire. That's why it's hot. He quickly closed his eyes, only for them to nearly pop out a moment later. Fire! Chitty bar. Chitty bar. Chitty bar. Fire! Yes! Fire! Celestia roared as he picked up Luffy by a leg in a ring of fanes. <gasps> He fell down into a burning ring of fire. He fell down, down, and the flames just kept getting up higher. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. The ring of fire. It's what you deserve. Her mane finally tossed itself around, burning various parts of the room. Ow, what did I do? Luffy asked as he tried to free himself from Celestia's grip. Don't you dare play innocent with me, Celestia said, now pointing to Royal Catalan voice. What have you done to my sister?